My stomach is in a whole different state right now. Hello beautiful people, my name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great day. And today is a different video, but we're gonna try to film it like it's not. So, <laughs> I am so scared right now. I am so scared. I want to film today's video because I feel like it's important. But when you film a video that's serious, it can either go like people understand what you're saying or it goes extremely wrong. So I am... Ugh. So today I'm going to talk about a topic that may be triggering to some people. This video is family friendly. I still think it's family friendly because it's not like graphic or anything. But trigger warning, if you are triggered by talks of domestic violence, it is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit that you guys never know about me. <laughs> um... And I never thought I'd make a video on this because honestly, it's kind of shameful. But because I feel like people who go through this think it's shameful and no one talks about it. Everyone's always talking about like, if someone's in a bad thing, you usually they should leave or whatever. Or like, people are like, say it's easier to leave. But you never hear it from someone who's been through something like this. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I've been through. No, you do not know the person that this is that did this to me. It's not any- there's no one for you to hunt down. Um, I haven't told anybody I'm filming this video at all. But yeah, I also just did my eye makeup today. I did my face with makeup. I'm gonna do my face makeup while we talk about this. So, I'm distracted and don't get upset. This intro is weird. Also, I am currently in the best relationship ever. Um, he is absolutely wonderful to me and every single way, even ways, like I couldn't even think of someone being so good to me and I'm so grateful for him and I'm already getting upset. But yes, I'm very, very happy right now so there's no need for concern. But this happened a couple years ago and we're going to talk about what it's like. So, let's get into the video and start doing my face so I don't get upset and I get distracted get distracted. Alright guys, so the products on my face will be in the description box because I don't want to talk about the makeup today. So yeah, this video is about domestic violence, but we're not going to get into super nitty, stupid, gritty details. But I feel like it's needed to be talked about and I don't even know where to begin with this story. So I've been in a few serious relationships in my life. Um, not that many really, just a couple. And I never expected something like this to happen to me. I never expected to be a person who even has this story to tell. And I feel like if you've been on my channel for a while, maybe you'd notice a certain time where my, like, attitude wasn't, like, as, like, happy as it is now or as, like, carefree as it is now. I mean, I also wasn't as comfortable on camera. But I'm irritating. Alright, <laughs> I guess that's where I have to start off. I find myself irritating. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why this went on for so long. And again, you do not know this person, so don't even think about it. <sighs> um, how do I even do this? How do I even stay? Okay, okay. I'm so sorry. A lot of people are probably going to unsubscribe me from this video. I think I'm an annoying person. I always am very insecure. I've always been very insecure. I don't really like myself. Is that a thing? Like, I'm okay with myself more, like, as I've grown up and, like, especially since I've started living in Florida and, like, really started to be, like, be whoever I want to be. I think it's great. But I've never been, the, like, a really out there confident person. I'm very reserved. Um... I don't mind like saying my opinion of things like that, but I'm not like a super out there like go get them kind of person. I'm not. So I feel like that made me more susceptible to this kind of situation. So I was with this guy for a while, right? And it was very volatile. I'm a very touchy, feely, like, love all over you 99% of the time, like, I'm annoying with how much affection I show you kind of person. 
and this person wasn't and that's perfectly fine like most guys aren't like as like touchy and feely most people in general aren't as touchy and feely and lovey as me i'm the person all over you like you're sleeping i'm kissing all over you like that sounds creepy but you know what i mean like i'm always lovey-dovey kind of person um and this person wasn't which is fine like it's fine, like, uh, most people aren't, and I never expect someone to be as lovey-dovey touchy as me, but it got to a point where even if we were together and things, they would definitely made sure, like, they wanted me around, they made it known that I wanted me around, but I, if I, like, tried to give them a kiss or I tried to, like, hug on them or something, it was kind of like a get-off-me situation, but don't leave, which isn't right to begin with. And, you know, that would start fights because I'm like, well, what do you, what do you like, what do you, you want me to round? You don't want me around? Like, I'm just trying to, like, be affectionate to you and show you that I care about you, which I think is normal. Maybe not as much as I do it, but I think it's normal. Um, and this person wasn't like that, which is fine. Again, it's fine. I don't have an issue with someone not being as affectionate as me. Um, but we would fight about it and we would fight about anything because this person honestly would drink a lot when we first got together they would drink a lot and I thought just because I like older guys this guy was older than me I thought it was normal this guy would drink a lot and every time I would find out he was like messaging girls talking about marrying them on the internet like he would just pass out drunk and I would see the thing when I woke up in the morning all over his screen about and talking about he wanted to be with someone else and not be with me and not um that he would even marry someone else just to get away from me. But as soon as they woke up, they don't remember doing any of this. They don't remember doing any of this. And it would cause fights. But the good times were so good and it's so easier to be with someone that I thought it was a drinking problem thing. And this guy had a drinking problem. Well, it always became the next day. Even, like, sometimes day drinking the next day, where I would bring this up and be like, why are you doing this? Like, do we, we don't have to be together. Like, what is this? Like, why are you doing this to me? It would always become my fault, which I think is, like, an ongoing theme in this kind of story. But because I, like, oh, I, there would always be a reason, like, I'm overwhelming, or this is just too much, there's a lot all at once. And a couple times it would just escalate, more than a couple times. I'd say one out of ten fights would end up with something ending up physical. And the first time it happened, I was, we were in a room, and it was hard to get out of, because it was just a small room, and we had this fight. And he grabbed a box cutter, and I was sitting at the end of the bed, and he ran at me with it. I don't think he was going to do anything with it, but it scared the crap out of me. I couldn't back up against the bed oh, it was, well, it was against the wall fast enough. And nothing happened. Like, I, I wasn't cut with it or anything. It wasn't like that. But that was the first sign of, like, an explosion. Because this person was always pretty calm. Like, that's kind of guy I go for, someone more calm, because I can be kind of, like, a weirdo. I usually go for the calmer type. You guys have probably noticed that. But I've noticed something with several men, even if they're not like physically like that, that they get quiet and they shut down and then it just explodes. And this isn't multiple people, not just the one I'm talking about, but when this guy did that, and it'll be out of nowhere, even if a fight I didn't think was that bad, or I'm just like, talk to me, give me an answer, because I can't stand being ignored. If you ignore me, like, I'm that person who would really like, make the situation worse, and I can't... I've tried to work on that since the situation, but I absolutely was that person who would egg someone on. I don't I don't completely blame this person. It's definitely a two-sided situation. Because I would definitely like if you ignore me, I'm like like talk to me like what you can't ignore me, like I'll freak out. I don't like to be ignored. But they would shut down sometimes and just explode, break the ceiling. Like, literally, like, throw something, I don't even know what it was, and broke the ceiling in the room we were in. Or, 
we sit in bed together and I say something he doesn't like and I'm not even facing him because I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever, turn over. And he pushes me so hard that I land on like a cabinet thing, like a cabinet door. And I think I have a great pain tolerance, but a couple times this happened behind me, like when things happen behind me, for some reason, if I get in that much pain, I will like, I'll fall over obviously, but I'll start to like, like cough, like I'm going to throw up and start like gagging and coughing and dry heaving. I don't even know if that's normal, but if it comes from behind me, it's like a blur from behind. It makes me want to like cough to the point where it sounds like I'm going to throw up and be sick. And that happened a few times. And there's always going to be people right now being like, this bitch is stupid. She didn't leave. It was out of all the time we spent together, it really wasn't that often. And it would always be some kind of thing afterwards because if I got to the point where I was hurt that bad and I was like driving on the floor, they would freak out that they actually hurt me. And it would be like a situation of like, like deep, deep apology. Like if it's something that could be physically seen on me, it's a deep, deep apology. If I'm sitting there throwing up on the floor almost, it's a, like a huge apology, like they're so sorry they didn't mean to do this, like I had egged them on for so long, and part of me is like, I mean, yeah, I did egg them on, like, I know they got quiet on me, I should have shut up and stopped egging, like, I guess egging them on to talk to me when they were being quiet and shutting down. But, of course, I blamed myself partially, I'm like, no, like, I needed the apology, obviously, and the emo, like, all the apology, like, coddling all over me afterwards made it seem like they were really sorry which sounds so stupid doesn't it but when you're in that moment and you're sobbing and you're covered in tears and you're in so much pain and someone's trying to comfort you you want to be comforted you know which sounds dumb because this person you should just be like fuck this person don't be around this person anymore and I understand that and that's what most people are gonna say but when you're in that much pain, you're that upset, and you're that hurt, and that's the only person around you. Like, genuinely seeming like they care if you're okay and like they didn't mean to do that to you. It's different. Most of the time when this happened, it would be somewhere, like, on the back of my shoulders when I hit that cabinet at that time. Which was like, one of the first times it was like, truly, truly like that could have broken something. I didn't know if it did. My back was so swollen. I thought my shoulder was broken. That was the first time it was that physical where I was like, holy crap, this is dangerous. When they're chasing me with a box cutter and it's not, they get close to me and I can't get anywhere and they don't cut me, it seems terrifying, but they control themselves. When they're throwing something at the ceiling, yes, it's terrifying, but it's not directed at me. At least they're getting it out, I guess. Is what it felt like? I don't know. Um, but yeah, that, that first time where I hit the cabinet, like, they thought they had just, like, they said they thought they just shoved me instead of, like, punching me into a cabinet. Um, and I know at that point I should have left, right? Left the situation anyways. But I didn't. And you have to admit, I, I mean, you have to understand at this point, I didn't have any family to fall back on and again I've been through so much stuff you guys don't even know about like I told you guys a lot of stuff before um, but I had no one to fall back on like the only person I had fallen back on was someone you guys have known um, but other than that like I didn't have any family any friends or anything because I'm not a very social person honestly and my family situation was not great at that point but I I thought it could get better I did leave once or twice but I came right back um because there's just so much apologies and like are you okay where are you like I guess I'm a forgiving person I can't hold grudges anymore I realize as an adult I can't really keep I'm not good at grudges. Um, but I should have been. I should have been good at grudges. So, yeah, I guess in the grand scheme of things, it's people 
who are like me, who are really insecure, who don't have anybody to fall back on, who are more isolated than other human beings in their life. I'm so glad I have people in my life now who care about me, but at that point I did not really have anyone to fall back on. Now I feel like if something like that happened, I could totally get out of the situation a lot faster. And I feel like because I've already been through the situation once, I wouldn't fall for this crap again. Um, but I did at one point in my life. And it got progressively worse. Like the fights would be less when they stopped drinking as much, so they wouldn't fight as much. But this person really had some problems that it felt like I was getting the brunt of the force on. One time, I was spending the night with them, and they went out drinking with their friend, and I was hanging out at their house, and I just went to bed um, because it was late. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to stay up till like 3 a.m. when they get home. I'm just going to go to sleep. And I did. And they come home smelling like cigarettes and alcohol, saying they'd only had four or five drinks. And I'm like, can you please, like, take your clothes off? Like, take a shower or at least brush your teeth or something. Can you take a shower? Because I cannot, I personally cannot stand the smell of cigarettes. Like, if you go to sleep smelling like alcohol, it's already gross enough. But if you go to sleep smelling like cigarettes, I cannot handle it and it really upsets me. Like, I don't want you to walk in my house smelling like cigarettes. I don't want to walk, I don't want to be in your house and you smell like cigarettes. I don't want the situation at all. Um, and since they only said they only had four or five drinks, I'm like, you can just take a shower real quick, it'll be fine. And then you can pass out. <sighs> I was laying in bed just like talking to them. They were laying in bed beside me. I'm like, can you please just get up and like not smell like cigarettes, please? It really bothers me and I can't sleep here beside you with that. They freaked out and they picked me up. I was laying in bed. They picked me up by my throat, threw me on the ground out like at the end of the bed and just sat there and choked me out. I was like, what's your problem? Like just, just yelling at me as I'm like, literally not being able to breathe. <laughs> and this was the first time I took like video evidence of what was happening to me just in case anything happened to me, which sounds crazy. If you're in that situation, you think something could happen to you like that bad, leave, get out, find somewhere safe to be. But of course, me did not. And when they woke up that next morning, I was not there at their house anymore. And they called me the next day and was like, hey, where are you, like, acting super sweet? And I ignored them, and I ignored them, and I ignored them. Like, all day. And it turns out, like, I genuinely believe this part because the alcoholism was a problem. Especially when they said they hadn't drank that much. And I know they were broke, so I know they didn't drink that much. But they genuinely did not remember picking me up by the throat and choking me out on the ground. And I honestly, from the way they said that, don't, I do not think they knew what they did. All the other times when they were drinking and stuff, yeah, they know what they did. And there's proof of what they did too when they like break the house or whatever. But I genuinely think that time they didn't know what they did to me. And when I was like, you know what, you want to see the video of what I took of like what you did to me? They refused to watch. They said it upset them too much. It upset them too much to see what they did to me the night before. Okay? That part always bothered me. I couldn't even play it and force them to watch it. Like, look what you did. Like, my throat is so red. You can see every mark on my body. and broken out in hives. Like, I'm just... My face is swollen from crying. And they didn't want to watch it. It would upset them too much. I think... After that incident where I was like, okay, you know what, if this ever happens again, I know he didn't remember it. He said he wasn't going to drink anymore. Wasn't going to drink anymore. This wouldn't happen anymore. Is what I thought. Because it always came up to drinking. That would always cause these kind of situations that got physical. We would fight when he was sober. But when he got physical, it was always him drinking. So he said he was going to stop drinking. And I was like, you know what? <sighs> I don't really have that many people I know. You know, you give the drinking up, like, that's a big deal because you're, like, a constant drinker. And I thought that would make a difference. It did a lot. There wasn't, like, there was only two more instances before I was, like, done with that situation. So the one time, I was upset. So, no, yeah. The one time, it was in the morning, I was getting ready for work. 
and th this this part of the story bothers me because cops are supposed to help you. Um, this part of the oh my god, this bothers me so much. Okay, so I got upset in the morning about something. I was getting ready for work. I was getting dressed for work in the morning, and I like could not miss any more days. Like it was like a situation. Like your, my job was so strict, they would have fired me. And we got in a fight about something that morning. I don't know what it was at all. I have no idea. But we got in a fight. And I ended up on the ground. And he ended up... I don't know if we he, like, hit me or what. But I ended up with my lip underneath here bleeding. And it was swollen. But he didn't care. Like, he just stormed off. And since he had stormed off, like, in a different room and slammed the door... I was like trying to get myself together like I can't miss work, I can't miss work. I was trying to get myself together and like go to work. I couldn't get myself together. I got myself together enough to drive to work which is only a couple minutes away and ball in the parking lot. I went in because I was like I can't miss a day and I clocked in for like five minutes I went to the bathroom and just cried and then I just came out and was like I can't. I, I couldn't even get out the words that I can't. Because it had just happened, like, you clock in, take me, like, three minutes to get to work, you clock in for, like, five minutes. It happened, like, ten minutes ago. And I just, it could, I could not do it. Um, my lip wasn't too, too swollen at that point, but it was still, like, you could see the cut in my lip. And I drove to my house where he was staying. Because he hadn't left from the night before, like, we'd hung out. And I was like, you have to leave. And... He refused to leave, and he called the cops on me, which was, you know, I was like, you know what, whatever, I'll be outside, I'm not dealing with this, like, get out. And because I was the upset one when the cops came, they were calm. They had taken a nap after the situation when I had driven to work. The cops came to, like, dis dissolve the matter or whatever they do, I don't know. And because he was all calm, all the cops wanted to talk to him about the situation, and because I was still a crying, blubbering mess, and I seemed crazy, I guess, this calm person had put on a nice outfit to, like, talk to the cops and, like, yeah, well, we just had, like, a little bit of an argument. She just got upset. She went to work, blah, blah, blah. I guess she was okay for that. And she just came back crazy. The cops asked, because I had the car, I had a car at the time, and he did not have a car at the time, if I could drive away and leave the situation for it to calm down. I lived there. I lived there and they asked me to leave even though I, t I showed them the inside of my lip and they're like do you want to press charges? I'm like no that sounds terrifying. I don't want to, no I don't want to like no it sounds scary as crap. I don't want to do that. They're like well ma'am you're very hyped up you need to leave the situation. I suggest you leave for the day. I'm like I live here. I live here. Because I'm a crying, blubbering, upset mess who had gotten physically assaulted and yelled at for hours at a time. I was the one who had to leave. That upset me so much. So much. That I was the one that had to leave because I had the, I have a car. <sighs> if I had pressed charges, this would have been a whole, like, domestic violence situation. No, I'm not, I can, I don't know. Like, yeah, it's smart, you should. People shouldn't be able to allow to do this, but going to court sounds terrifying. Um, and that was the first time it happened sober. I only put up with one more time because I had to get back to my house. Um, one more time. And people were, I know everyone in the comment section is going to be like, girl, just leave. Like, it's not that hard. When you're as needy <laughs> as I am and as I was willing to put up with a lot because I didn't have anything, now my standards are like, like, I'm not going to put up with any crap at all. I don't care how much I like the person, I'm not gonna put up with any crap. Like even in my last relationship, you guys know, like he was very sweet to me and I didn't put up with anything. And now my current relationship is the best ever, literally ever. So I'm not gonna put up with anything either. But yeah, I was asked to leave that time. And it only happened one, the last time that something happened it was probably like a month after this and it was the worst one. This last time was in the middle of the day. I just got off work. I just like picked him up and we were at my house and I don't remember what the fight was about because apparently the fight didn't matter that much, right? Um, but it ended up, he was storming, like 
he was storming to go leave. He was just going to walk home. He was storming out to go leave. We were fighting. I was standing in the living room. He was leaving. And I didn't follow him, of course, because I was, like, mad. But, of course, I am the queen of little tiny snarky comments. Even when someone's leaving or they're trying to, like, stop an argument, I always have something, like, little and stupid to say. I don't know why I do it. I know it's an issue. <sighs> but he came up from behind me and just, like, in full force punched me in the back of my head, like, right here. Like, where your neck connects, your spine connects to the back of your head kind of area. Punched me so hard that my body collapsed to the ground into, like, a puddle. And if I did, like, that coughing, like, gonna throw up thing again. And they stormed out of the house. I crawled from the living room to the nearest bathroom to, so, like, heave over the toilet. Like, as I thought I was gonna throw up, I was coughing, like, that kind of bad. And I was in that much pain. And I thought I was gonna die. Genuinely don't know how I didn't have some kind of fracture or severe damage. It was like a baseball. Probably a, a baseball covered in Play-Doh. Something like a not maybe grapefruit. Small grapefruit. Sized welt right here in the back of my head and neck. And it hits you know like if you get like a bruise or something it takes a while to develop. This developed so fast. And I don't know if I've ever been that much pain. I mean, food poisoning was pretty bad too, though. Like, food poisoning is the devil. But, like, I was in so much physical pain. Um. And this person had stormed out of the house, and I guess they forgot their phone or their house keys or something. So they came back in, because obviously I didn't go lock the door behind him. Like, I was crawling to the bathroom at that point, like, heaving over the toilet. And they came in yelling at me that I was being overdramatic. And that I was... Like, trying to make a scene or make them, make them feel sorry for me or something. And I literally could not speak. Um, I was just too busy coughing or whatever. I couldn't speak to, like, tell them to leave or whatever. And when I couldn't stop, and it was obvious, like, I started to spit up stuff. When it was obvious, because my head was swollen and my hair was pretty short at the time. I usually keep my hair, like, this shortness anyways. Maybe a little bit longer than this. But because, like, it was, like, I was covered in like tears and everything, my hair had gotten wet and you could actually like move it around and see it because it wasn't like fluffy or anything. It was apparent how hard they had hit me. And they said, they always said that they blacked out during this and they don't remember what happened or they can't control it. They always said they can't control it, like they black out, they get silent. Then they burst into like, I don't know, the Hulk or something. And um, yeah. I couldn't drive, but I thought I was going to die. And I just, the first swear I could get out of my mouth that wasn't like a cough or like throwing up sound was hospital. And instead of like throwing me in the car for me to go, they like walked in the bedroom where they had some clothes um, set aside. And they were, like, picking out a nicer outfit to take with them when they took me to the hospital because they knew they were going to get arrested. And that's what they said. I, when they finally decided they would drive me to the hospital, they drove kind of slow with their extra outfit in the car. They make sure they had their ID on them and everything. And they're like, well, I guess this is over. You want a restraining order? Blah, 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 blah. I'm definitely getting arrested today. Like, there's no way I could talk myself out of this one. And I really felt guilt-tripped. Because, of course, I had to have that last word. I had to have that last little tick in there. Um, and we got to the hospital. We were in the front of the parking lot before we, because we didn't pull up to the emergency room or anything. We were sitting in the parking lot. And they're like, you know what, I'll take care of you. We can go to, like, Virginia. We can go to the movies, blah, 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 blah. And my dumb self was like, I can't, I don't want you to get arrested. Like, I don't want you to ruin your life. And me covered in tears with a grapefruit sized welt in the back of my head, never feeling so stuffed up and like swollen in my life. 
I was like, I don't want you to get arrested. So they drove us to Virginia and we like went around places. And he would try to make jokes of like, Haha, do you need a mascara today or something? Because I like makeup. Making jokes. I didn't think it was very funny. And I knew it was trying to like lighten the mood. I get that because it's just a tense situation with someone you physically like almost murdered in the car with you. But that was the last situation where it got physical. So, um, things were completely cut off after that. Um, yeah. And somehow I don't hate this person. Somehow after all of this, I still partially think, like, why do I always have the last word in? Why am I so irritating? Why am I always so touchy? Why do I not just drink as much as someone else? I'm not a drinker. I don't know. Um... But as far as the point of this video, I guess, not a pity party whatsoever, like, I got myself out of the situation. I had a good relationship after that, and now I have the best relationship I could ask for. So it's been a while since this incident, like, I've definitely had time to heal, but there's still effects of this. Like, he's gonna hate me for even bringing him into this video, because he has nothing to do with it. Adam and I had, like, a small argument the other day. And he was just like, ugh. And me, instinctually, backed up. And I do not think anything bad about Adam at all. I think he's the most amazing person in the world and he would do anything for me. I think he's just so, he's so perfect. And instinctually, when someone goes, ugh, and they get quiet for a second, I back up. And he's like, what are you doing? Come sit down, let's, let's talk this out. I'm like, I'm just so scared someone's going to hit me. And I bawled my eyes out and he did not understand, like, because I don't tell people this. I don't tell people I've been through this. This is not something I'm proud of, that I dealt with this and I put up with it and I blame myself for this. And I didn't absolutely, like, hurt this other person back. I felt so bad and I just, I cried so hard. I haven't cried that much in such a long time. And Adam put up with me. And he just held me. And I was like, just let me go, like, you know, just like, I don't want to argue with you anymore, like... You should have to deal with me when I'm like this. I shouldn't show this side of me. Like, this destroyed, absolute broken side of me to you. Um, and he just, like, reassured me, like, if you have a mental, like, breakdown over this kind of situation, like, I'm never going to do that to you. Most people wouldn't do that kind of thing to you. The person that did that to you is terrible. Um, and, like, you're not responsible for the way someone treats you if you, like, instinctually back up for a situation or whatever. And he was absolutely amazing and... The way I look when I like cry cry is not great and I didn't want him to see that part of me but he was absolutely so supportive but it definitely shows me that I'm not 100% better. I like to think because it's been a while I've had a couple of relationships since then I'm in a good spot and I am in a really good spot mentally. I think I'm way better than I used to be because I was so insecure. I was so broken. I was willing, willing to put up with so much more than I am now because now I'm not going to put up with anybody's crap. Like I'm an adult. I don't have time for this. I'm not going to put up with anybody's crap. But I guess instinctually, it's that self-preservation from trauma like that that really gets to me. And it's the only thing that really, like, sticks with me still. And it still affects my life, even years later. So, that's fun. Um, but yeah, don't put up with this. And if you suspect, I know this is, like, the most common thing people say. If you suspect someone is going through this. Like, say something, do something. But most people, they don't want to tell anyone. I never told anyone. I'm not telling anybody till this moment. I mean, obviously Adam found out. And Daniel knew, but... Most people aren't going to know this about me. It's not something I advertise. And I think only two people have known about this situation, so... That's fun. If you think someone's going through this, there's no easy way to convince them to leave other than showing them something better. 
try to get them to move somewhere, like to a fun city, try to get them to start a new job in something they really like, try to get them invested in a new hobby, something that distracts them and makes them happy enough where they can say, this makes me really happy, I can involve myself in this and get away from that toxic person in their life. Because just telling them, leave him girl, is not going to help anyone. Um, of course you can tell them to leave them, they should leave them, but also try to make them feel like there is something in their life that they have value to, whether it's a hobby, whether it's a really good friendship, like like, offer to take them out to dinner more often. Like, go hang out at your house, watch a movie with them. Go get them an interest in their life that makes them happy so they don't feel like the only happiness in their life is when this relationship is going well. I feel like that's something people don't really talk about. They just say, tell them to leave. Tell someone if you suspect something. You need to really take the time and invest and make this person happy and trust you more so maybe they will test you. They will trust you with this and, like, they will help leave. But the scariest thing is what will happen if you leave. They already get upset enough when we get in a fight. What will happen if I leave? And there's so many stories of people trying to leave and getting murdered. It's a thing, you guys. Sorry, it's a thing. It's not fun, but it's a thing. So, like, do more than just be like, you should leave him, and just leave them alone with it. You have to do more than that if you suspect someone in a situation. If you're in the situation, I am so sorry. It's not permanent. You can get out of it no matter how many times you forgive them for it and how many times they say they'll change and how many times you think like, oh, I shouldn't have done this. Like, I shouldn't have egged him on. I shouldn't have done this. Maybe I shouldn't have started this argument. Maybe I shouldn't have brought this topic up. No matter how, how many times this comes up, it's not your fault that someone treats you like garbage. And you, just, you do deserve more. I personally did not think great things of myself at all, so I thought I didn't deserve more than that. Um, I knew I didn't deserve to be hurt. Um, but the mental abuse that we both did to each other was bad. So I always thought, like, I had contributed this to this because I was arguing back. Like, I wasn't, like, sitting in the corner cowering. I was arguing back. But yeah, you never know who's going through this. I don't think anyone ever suspected I went through this. And again, it was always something you couldn't see on my back, inside of my mouth or on the back of my head covered up by hair. Anytime something had physically happened to me, I was able to cover it up. I can't think of one time, I can think of one, only one time, I can only, yeah, it was only one time and it was my arm. I can only think of one time where I was physically hurt by this person and I couldn't hide it. The rest of the times it was always smart on their point, whether they blacked out and don't remember it at all or was just really conveniently like that, that it was always something that could be hidden. And you could pretend the next day that everything was fine. Now the point where like they black out and they're drunk and they just don't remember doing something to you. Documentation, but leave. Document it so if anything gets worse and you have a physical thing like I did where I thought I was going to die on the back of the head, you can get out of that situation and it's so important. And it is terrifying to think about leaving, especially when you don't have a good support system of your own. I guess the moral of the story is do more than just like be aware of domestic violence. Don't just, this is domestic violence awareness, but don't just be aware of it. Do something about it. Get out of that situation the best you can. If you're in that situation, if you are, I'm so sorry. And it's not always just men beating women. Women are abusive too. I always think that's always a double standard. People always assume it's a man hurting the woman. A woman can hurt a man as well. Um, an emotional abuse, trying to degrade you, because I have this complex still, even though it's been years, of like, I always ask at the end of the day, is it okay if I take my makeup off? I shouldn't have to ask that, especially if I'm in my own house. I shouldn't have to ask if it's okay if I take my makeup off, because this person would also like do things where they were like, oh, why'd you take your makeup off if I took it off when they came over? Or... It would be like, why don't you just leave that on for a little while more? If I'm like, okay, I'm going to take my face off. They're like, why don't you just leave that on for a little bit? It really hurts your self-esteem. And I still have really bad self-esteem about that. I don't like to be seen without makeup on. I'm getting better with that now. Adam treats me absolutely amazing. And he just, he says, like, get comfortable. I don't care if you wear a makeup or not. And I'm still, like, weirded out by that complex. And it's been years. But I am very insecure about makeup on. On the camera, in person, like, on videos, I don't care because I am just sitting here alone. 
but I do have this complex of like, is it okay if I take my makeup off at the end of the day? And I shouldn't have to feel like that. I should just be comfortable and like, like me this or like me that. You know? But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I guess... I actually, I don't know if I want you to enjoy this video or not. I don't know how to feel about that. Um, thank you guys for watching though. Thank you for listening to the end of this video. I know it was a long story and I'm pretty sure I like trampled over everything. I don't even know if the point of this video made sense. Other than domestic violence awareness, do more than just be aware of it. I feel like that catches the rhyme a little bit. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And I will see you in the next one.